Hello! Welcome to TJC. We hope that you have been having a great orientation thus far. I'm Ms. Janice Chan and I'm here with the History Department today to share with you a little bit about what A-Level History is like. Okay, so hopefully by the end of this sharing, you would be a little bit clearer about what your potential subject combinations might be and whether history would feature in it. Okay, so the plan for today uh, has, is threefold. Okay, so I'll be talking first about the syllabus of the A-level history, uh, the different focus um, specifically between H1 and H2. Okay, we will then talk a little bit about how history is assessed at the A-levels and finally about what studying history at TJC is like. So I'm sure that we might not cover everything. Um, so please feel free to ask your questions at the end um, of the sharing, submit them to our Padlet, or you can join our Zoom call as well to talk to us further there, okay? So first, what is history in the first place? What do we do when we study history? Why should you study history? Okay, so um, people always say, right? History is the study of the past, but it is more than that. Okay, we aren't just studying what happened, we are studying why these things happened as well. Okay, so our exploration of why and how these historical developments happen can help us to understand the world that we live in today. So for example, why is the US-Chinese relationship so fraught today? Okay, can it be traced to Chinese-US relations in the 19th and 20th centuries? Um, why do so many Southeast Asian countries have implicit biases towards the Ang Mors? Okay, is it a legacy from our colonized past? So history gives us an understanding okay, of the world that we live in today, helps us to understand why we are the way we are. So when we study history, we build our understanding of the world, and that is extremely valuable in today's complex and volatile world. History gives us the tools to make sense of the randomness around us. Okay, we identify patterns and trends. We formulate hypotheses and arguments from the evidence that we gather. So A-level history starts us off on a very exciting journey of historical thinking. Okay. So now that we've glimpsed a little bit about what history has to offer, let's talk about what you will be learning for history at the A-levels. Okay, so um, we will be talking about H2 and H1 history. Okay, the syllabus has overlaps, but they are very distinct in terms of focus. So let's start first by talking about H2 history. So for H2 history, the focus of the syllabus is much more on breadth. So you should come away uh, at the end of your two years with a very broad understanding of developments across the 20th century uh, in both the international and the regional arena. So what does this mean? Okay, at H2 level, we do two papers of history. Okay, we look at international history in paper one. Okay, um, and so we start off uh, really by looking at the origins, the development, and the end of the Cold War in your J1 year. So this is also your source-based topic, okay, meaning that the source-based question of, of your exam paper will always come from this theme, okay, uh, understanding the Cold War. Moving on from the Cold War in J2, you will then uh, explore how the global economy developed in the post-World War II world. Okay, how the global economy grew in the 50s and 60s, um, encouraged by the rise of the Asian tigers, as well as then the problems that they faced in the 70s and 80s. Okay, in the last theme, we will then look at the efforts taken uh, to safeguard international peace and security, primarily through the creation of the UN and its various organs. So as you can tell, the paper one syllabus looks very much at the politics, economics, and international relations of the global community, okay, which gives you a very strong grounding in understanding how the world today came to be. So if we study H2, uh, this is simply half of your course. Okay, the other half actually revolves around Southeast Asian history. Okay, so this looks much more at regional history. So in Southeast Asian history, the syllabus is really focused on the development of Southeast Asian states after independence. Okay, we see this in the first two themes. So um, looking at the political and the economic development of Southeast Asian states after they become independent. So we will explore how the Philippines established and maintained political stability. Okay, and compare that to Indonesia or Malaysia or any of the Southeast Asian many of the other Southeast Asian states, okay, to see about both the similar trends and differences that differentiate them. 
Similarly, we will also be looking at the economic transformation of these Southeast Asian states. Okay, so we will consider why Singapore's path to economic development looks so different to say Burma or maybe even Thailand. So in your J2 year, okay, we will then move on to explore how these Southeast Asian states navigate their relationships with their neighbours, okay, and the complexities in these relationships. So we study the development of ASEAN and the specific conflicts that various Southeast Asian states have with one another, okay, uh, or with other big powers in the region. So as compared to Paper 1, uh, Paper 2 is much more comparative in nature. We are constantly juggling between the different and uh, the different histories of the different Southeast Asian states to identify common patterns and distinct differences. I know that many of us can find Southeast Asian history to be a little bit daunting. Uh, it can seem very complex and ironically enough, very foreign, uh, but it really is very exciting to study. So it gives you a very nuanced understanding of the, of the region that we live in. Uh, that is extremely valuable in today's world. Okay. At TJC, we also offer H1 history. So this is something that many of our science students uh, choose to offer as a contrasting subject. So whilst there are similarities between H1 and H2 syllabus, at H1, the syllabus is much more tightly focused on the Cold War. Okay, so what this means is that we will first explore and understand the development of the Cold War as the first theme in J1. So this is very similar to the H2 syllabus. Okay, just like the H2 syllabus, uh, this theme is also your source-based topic. Okay, we, however, then go on to look at the impact of the Cold War on Asia, okay, uh, as your second theme in your J2 year. So we do this by exploring superpower relations with China, uh, by looking at the Cold War's impact on Southeast Asia through the Vietnam War, through uh, Singapore and ASEAN's development and responses to the Cold War. So lastly, we will then explore the impact of the Cold War on the international community uh, by looking at the Cold War and the United Nations. Okay, so how the UN was shaped by Cold War circumstances during and even after the end of the Cold War. So as you can tell, every theme in H1 uh, sort of comes back to the Cold War, which is quite nice because then you see that how everything is interconnected and tied back very closely to this big development of the 20th century. Okay, so I've talked quite briefly about the different syllabuses. So if you'd like to look through them more thoroughly, uh, you can scan here and it will link you to the relevant PDFs. Okay, so now that we have talked about what you'll be studying at the A-level uh, at the A-level for history, okay, we will look then at how history is assessed. So again, there are similarities and differences between H1 and H2. So for H2, you will have to take two three-hour papers. Okay, so one for international history, paper one, and one for Southeast Asian history, paper two. So each paper has one source-based question and two essay questions. So the source base makes up 40% of your grade and the two essay questions make up 60% together. You are given a choice for your essay questions. What that means is that you will be given two questions per team. So for example, understanding the global economy. Okay, and you will choose a question from that team. So similarly, uh, you'll be given two questions for uh, your third team. Uh, safeguarding international peace and security, and you would choose one question to answer from that. So I have provided a sample of the A-level paper uh, in the slides later on, so you can take a look at that. Uh, it might help to make things clearer. Right, so for H1, the format of the paper is exactly the same, except for the fact that you will only have to take one three-hour paper, okay, uh, as well as uh, the fact that for the H1 source space, you have five sources to deal with, as compared to the H2 that uh, which has six sources. Other than that, uh, the format of the paper is exactly the same. So as mentioned earlier, you can scan here to look at uh, sample A-level papers for both H1 and H2. I've only linked uh, the H2 paper one paper, okay, because the format of the papers, uh, the structure of the papers are exactly the same. So the only difference between paper one and paper two uh, is really the content. Okay. So now that you have a good understanding of the syllabuses and the assessment frameworks, on to the fun stuff. So at TJ History, we use a lecture tutorial system. So you are expected to read up on the necessary content before you go for lectures. Okay? And during the lecture, we will be going through the debates and the arguments that the various topic deals with. Okay? 
Tutorials are then smaller groups. It usually ranges from about 10 to 18, uh, where you have the opportunity to clarify your understanding and engage in deeper, deeper discussions um, in response to specific tutorial questions. So both tutorials and lectures are interactive and participative in nature. Okay, you are encouraged to share your thoughts uh, with your classmates and your tutors. One thing to note, uh, if you haven't already realized, is that if you are taking H2 history, you'll be doing paper one and paper two concurrently. Okay, So this means uh, that you have two lectures per week, one for paper one, one for paper two. Similarly, you have two tutorials per week, one for paper one, one for paper two. Okay, uh, This is how most JCs teach, and so this is something that you need to get used to. Okay, at TJ, uh, we also use quite a bit of blended learning. Okay, so what this means is that we are proponents of technology in teaching and learning. So every student in TJ is given a TJC Gmail account and you will be assessing Google Classroom regularly for assignments, uh, lecture materials, other resources. So for those of us out there who are a little bit more technology wary, please don't worry, it is a learning process that we all undertake together. Okay, in any case, uh, it is very helpful for JC in general for you to have your own personal learning device, so like a laptop. Okay, so that's something that you might want to prepare. Beyond the classroom and the curriculum, the history department believes very strongly in cultivating um, an interest and appreciation in history outside of the syllabus. Okay, so history is more than what we study for A-levels. Uh, and we regularly organize various learning journeys and events uh, to celebrate the discipline and deepen our appreciation of the past. So we hope that this is something you're excited about as well. Okay, there are very many opportunities to do this and we can't wait to uh, get to know you better through these activities. Okay, so at the end of the day, I always like to say that here in the history department, we are a family. History, uh, JC, okay, can be a very intense two years. Um, like all other subjects, the rigors of A-level history are very high. Okay, we will demand your very best and we will challenge you in your learning. Okay, but we will also support you when you feel overwhelmed. We will encourage you when you feel like giving up. So we are very, very proud of the fact that our students come away at the end of their two years, not just with academic success, but as thoughtful, uh, mature, and sensitive individuals who are curious and excited about the world around them. So if this is something that you'd like to develop, then please come and join us. Uh, we're very excited to meet you. Okay, so that's it for me. I hope this has helped you gain some clarity in terms of uh, potential subject combinations. If you do have any questions for us, please uh, scan the QR codes. You can either um, go to our Padlet, submit questions there. Okay, uh, there are so, there is sort of like an FAQ there already for uh, commonly asked questions. Okay, and we will try to get back to you as quick as possible. Okay, if you would like something a little bit more immediate, then you can also scan the QR code to come and join us in the Zoom talk. Okay, um, and we will be engaging you there in conversation. Okay, so that's it for me. Thank you very much, and we'll see you very soon. Bye.